Andy, did you hear that? Come on, will you? Did I hear what? That whistle. <whistles> That's the Rinso White whistle. And Rinso means us. That's right. Rinso gets clothes, Rinso White, and Rinso presents the Amos and Andy Show. <laughs> Rinso for a wash that's... Rinso white? Yes, a Rinso white, Rinso bright wash can't be beat. Soapy rich Rinso suds get out stubborn dirt fast. Put Rinso to work for you in your tub or washer and judge for yourself how much easier wash day can be, how much better your clothes will look. And nowadays, when you're trying to get as much wear as possible out of your things, you'll appreciate the fact that Rinso is easy on your clothes, safe for washable colors. Next wash day, remember... Rinso white. Rinso white. Rinso for a wash that's rinso white, rinso bright. And now our stars, Amos and Andy. Today, Andrew H. Brown received a letter from a reputable Chicago clothing concern offering him a position as their representative at $75 per week plus commissions. Yes, it was a surprise to us, too, but the old boy has it. And right now he's in his office joyously telling the news to Amos. Amos, I knowed I was going to hit the jackpot someday. Now, there's a letter right there. I really going to have money to live on. Yeah, well, I sure happy for you, son, but don't go spending this money now as fast as you make it. Well, I know this much. I was tired of living the way I is. And I'm going to start living like a man that's got success ought to live. I'm going to eat in the best restaurants. Oh, only the expensive ones, huh? Oh, yeah, high class, where the peoples don't blow on their soup. <laughs> the waiters do it for you. <laughs> and I'm going to rent me a big house and have servants and everything. Yeah, well, I'm glad to hear that. I suppose you're going to have a valet to wait on your hand and foot. Yeah, and even maybe another one to wait on the rest of me. <laughs> Oh, yeah, I'm going to hire a gardener to take care of the big grounds I'm going to have around my house. Oh, you're going to have a lot of grounds, too. I suppose you're going to have a swimming pool, too. Oh, I'm going to have three swimming pools. Hot, cold, and loose. <laughs> you know, Ann, uh, you are starting to spend your money even before you go to work. Yeah, but the job is in the bag, son. Here, read this letter to me. I knows it by heart, but I loves to hear Yeah, oh, from the Prentice Clothing Company, huh? Yeah. Oh, I was here to them. That's a high-class concern. Certainly is high-class. You can see for yourself they only writ on one side of the paper. <laughs> Say here, dear Mr. Brown, you have been suggested as the logical salesman to represent our firm in Harlem. Yeah, jump down to the salary part. Oh, uh, here it is. Say, uh, this position guarantees that in addition to commission... You will receive a salary of $75 per week. Hmm, $75 per week. Yeah. That's sure a high bracket. Oh, man, I can feel Morgenthau's hand in my pocket right now. <laughs> uh, then I say here, naturally, we require a letter of recommendation from some citizen of good local standing. Yours very truly, the Prentice Clothing Company, Chicago. Yeah, hey, Amos, you as a local citizen in good standing, uh, how about you writing the letter? Well, all right, I'll write one, Andy. Uh, let me see what I'll say. Uh... Well, just tell them that I has the steady type. I ain't flighty or nothing, and anything I start, so I sticks to. Tell them I've been doing the same thing now that I was doing five years ago. Yeah, hey, but you ain't been working for the last five years. <laughs> well, I stuck to it, didn't I? <laughs> all right, I'll go home and write the letter. Well, I'll walk along, along with you there. Now that that's all set for the job with the Prentice Clothing Company... I'm going over to the lodge and sell everybody I see a suit of clothes. How, Miss Andy? The kingfish will be back in just a little while. Lightning, what is the matter with you? Uh, what did you say? Don't never walk up to me looking shabby like you look now. It's a disgrace to be seen talking to you the way you was dressed. Oh, uh, what do you mean, Miss Andy? Oh, that is the baggiest looking suit. I ain't never see nothing look like that. Yeah, uh, well, I suppose uh, it's supposed to look like that. It's a sack suit. 
Well, it looked like a sack, all right. Turn around. Let me see if you got Pillsbury printed on your back there. Uh, well, Where'd you get that suit at? I bought it at a second-hand store down the street. Uh, the fellow that sold it to me said it was a genuine Harris Tweed. A Harris Tweed? Yeah, the fellow by the name of Harris wore it for six years. <laughs> but I guess the suit is getting awful thin. I say it's getting thin. In another couple of months, you're going to have to wear a slip under that thing. <laughs> like and I are selling men's suits. Yeah, so well, I'll buy a suit from you, Miss Landon. All right, I'll take your measurements. Uh, uh oh. Lightning, get on out of here. Uh, yeah, I'll say, Brother King. Uh, I'll take care of that later, Lightning. Uh, okay, Miss Landon. You get out, too, Anna. Well, wait a minute. I come over to talk to you, King. And I'm going to lay my cause on the table. I've been figuring the reason I never gets nowhere, and it's because I've been tied up with a bum like you. And from now on, me and you is enemies. You hear that? That's what it is, enemies. That suits me, because I got a job paying me $75 a week. And the sit down at the peace table. <laughs> uh, you really got a $75 a week job, huh? Yeah, yeah. Read the letter I got. Friend of the commission, and I crazy about you. <laughs> uh, partner, dear, uh, about this seventy-five dollar week job of yours. Now that's a lot of money for one man to handle. You need a manager. Oh, I thought you was leading up to something like that. Nothing doing, Kingfish. Well, now wait a minute, Andy. You need me to be your manager, Kingfish. I want to ask you a question, Andy. You need a manager. I want to ask you a question. I'm telling you, you need a manager, Kingfish. Will you let me ask one question? Okay, go ahead. Why does I need a manager? Well, now that you asked the question and that's over, let's get on with the thing here now. Uh, <laughs> as your manager... Listen, Kingfish, I found this job myself. It was offered to me, and I'm keeping it for myself, and I don't need no partner or no manager. Yeah, but, Ander, we have always been partners, old pal. Yeah. We have always been in business together. Work together, fail together. Think of the beautiful bankruptcies we have had together. <laughs> Kingfish, you ain't cutting in on this thing. It's mine. And my boy, you is tired. You don't know what you are saying. You gotta rest. And unlatch yourself. Now you sit down here and stop worrying. Just leave your mind a blank, and I'll be back in three hours with a contract all in your favor. <laughs> Oh, hello, Kingfish. Come on in. Glad to see you. I sure was glad to see you. Well, how are you, Gabby? Uh, uh, tell you why I was here. Uh, you was a lawyer, and I need some advice, and I need it fast. Well, you come to the right man. You sure come to the right man, because I work fast. In the legal profession, I was known as a dynamo, an electrical dynamo. By the way, has you got any money to pay for this advice? Oh, uh, no. I just blew a fuse. <laughs> Well, now, now, look here, Gabby. The advice that, that, that I want uh, don't amount to much and won't take no time. Sorry, but I was too busy to work for class. Don't pay. I'm much too busy. Why, well, I just finished a big case today. You did? I sure did. I defended a man that was accused of stealing a crate of oranges, a whole crate of oranges. I plead his innocence. I plead his innocence because I knew he didn't do it. Yeah, well, did he pay you? Sure he paid me. Sure he paid me. In fact, uh, here, have a glass of orange juice. <laughs> uh, no thanks, Gabby, but tell me, is, is you got to have money before you give me any advice? That's right, Kingfish. You got to have $2 cash, $2 cash. Uh, cash. Uh, won't you take my check? Sure. If you wrap the cash up in it. <laughs> uh, uh, Gabby, uh, will you settle for half a buck cash? Kingfish, you got yourself an attorney. Okay, okay, Gabby. Now, now here's what I want to know. I suppose... You know the man that was going to get a nice job paying him $75 a week. I figure how to get that money away from the man. I sure get away from him. I sure get away from him. I don't know what road you took, the high road or the low road, but you sure got to Scotland before me there. Uh, uh, look, Gabby, if this man is making $75 a week, according to the law, is there any reason why I can't get him to sign a contract selling me... 50% interest in his salary. Oh, that's legal, all right. Yes, indeed, that's legal. But you got to be careful that you don't run up against the Pure Food and Drug Act. The Pure Food and Drug Act. The Pure Food and Drug Act? How do you fit that in there? Well, you is guilty of pure chiseling, and because you was taking the food out of his mouth, the first act of the police will have to have you drug in the court. That's the Pure Food and Drug Act, if I have had it. So <laughs> is. Let's hear the Mystic Knights of the Sea Quartet sing the night train to Memphis. Take that night train to Memphis, take the night train to Memphis, and when you arrive at the station, 
Oh, I'll be right there to meet you. I'll be right there to greet you. So don't turn down my invitation. Oh, take that night train to Memphis. Take the night train to Memphis. You know how I'm longing to see you. Oh, take the 357 and arrive at 11. And I'll be shouting hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I'll be shouting hallelujah all the day. How you will have a jubilee down in Memphis, Tennessee. And we'll shout hallelujah all the day. When the train comes along, when the train comes along, I will meet you at the station when the train comes along. Well, watching the trains come in, watching the trains go out, what do I do when the trains come in? Well, I watch all the trains go out. Hallelujah, hallelujah, I'll be shouting hallelujah all the day. You say you told Andy to meet us here at the lodge hall, didn't you? Oh, uh, yeah, Henry. He ought to be here any minute. And uh, I want you to know that I'm letting you know on the nice thing. I, I just couldn't raise $25 by myself. Yes, well, here's my twelve fifty. Good, and there's mine. That gives us $25 to buy half interest in Andy's salary. Mm-hmm. Hey, wait a minute. I hear somebody coming now. Yeah. Uh, come in, brother Andy. Come in. Charming to see you, Andy. Uh, yeah, charming to see you, too. Uh, sit down, brother Andy. There's a soft seat right there. Uh, before I forget it, Andy, me and my wife would like to have you come over to our house for supper tonight. Only yesterday, Mrs. Van Porter was saying we ain't had Andy Brown up to our place for supper for a long time. I ain't never been up to your place for supper. <laughs> Has it been that long? <laughs> Yeah, well, uh, we can get to the social stuff a little later, boys, but now let's sit down here and talk. Uh, and uh, if you don't think about what we was discussing before, uh, maybe me and Henry can be your managers. Yeah, I think about it, and I still don't see why I need no managers. Fellas, y'all are just wasting your time. Now, you know, Andy, if you keep up this attitude, well, we liable to refuse to be your managers. How would you like that? I'd like it. I know you'd see our way. <laughs> now, let me read you the contract I got you. Now, this is the most important thing I got you. Just put everything in writing so you ain't going to have no mistake about nothing. Yes, and this is all in your favor, Andy, because you is the helpless type and you need some shrewd managers. Yeah, that's right, Andy. Now, let me read the contract here. See here... Andrew H. Brown, hereafter referred to in this document as Helpless Brown, (laughs) agrees to appoint as his joint business manager, uh, Henry Van Porter, hereafter known as Shrewd Henry, and uh, George Kingfrey Stevens, hereafter known as Even Shrewder Stevens. (laughs) Now, how do the contracts sound so far, Helpless? Uh, Just keep reading. Yes, go on. Uh, How does it sound to you, Shrewd? Oh, it sounds just fine. Even Shrewder? Uh, they say here, the said managers agree to pay the said Andrew H. Brown $25 in cash. And on top of that, said managers agree to break their backs managing, helping, advising, talking to, and talking with Andrew Brown in return for which he agrees to pay them 50% of his salary as long as he got a job. Furthermore... Hey, hey, wait <laughs> Something, something done words past me there. Uh, and, uh, I don't even know what you're talking about. No, I didn't notice nothing whizzing by. Uh, let me finish reading the contract. Furthermore, Brown gets the lion's share of the weekly check of $75, and all that the managers get is a measly $37.50. Furthermore... Hold it, hold it, hold it. <laughs> something else done whizzed by me again. I never see the contract win the high gear like this one do. Well, and uh, I think that gives you an idea of what a fair contract is. Now, me and Henry are going in the other room and copying on the typewriter right quick so we can all sign the thing. Yeah, see you in a minute, yeah, Andy. We'll be right back. Them two is always trying to pull a fast one on me. 
I think they're chiseling in on me. I... Oh. Well, how is you there, Andy? Come in, Amos. Come in. Yeah, I didn't uh, say... That. Wasn't that the kingfish and Henry running down the hall there a second ago? Yeah, I guess it was, all right. Yeah. Uh, say, Andy, I was just over to your office and this telegram was there for you. I thought I'd bring it over here. Telegram, huh? Let me see it, Amos. Yeah, it must be something reporting. Yeah, it is. Yeah, what do I say? Read it. It's from the Prentice Clothing Company in Chicago. Listen to this. Huh? We sent you an offer of a position by mistake. Due to an error, we wrote to you instead of Andrew B. Brown. Oh. Please disregard our letter. Hope this hasn't inconvenienced you. Prentice Clothing Company. Well, Amos... Oh, gee, Andy, that sure is bad news, ain't it? Yeah. You know, even if they did make a mistake, they could have given me a chance at the job. This way, I'd be fired before I was even hired. <laughs> yeah, they could have given you a chance, all right. Oh, yeah. On every other job I done had, before they fired me for being no good, they at least give me a week to prove it. <laughs> well, it's just one of them things, Andy. Yeah, that's a bad break, all right. It's sure going to be a surprise to Kingfish and Henry. You know, they want to be my managers and take a puss out of my salary. Oh, if they're pulling that stuff again, don't they ever stop trying to chisel? Well, it don't look that way. Somebody ought to teach them a lesson. Yeah, you're right. Somebody ought to, uh... Say, wait a minute. Yes, sir, you got an idea there, Amos. Teach them a lesson. That's the stuff. And you know something? What's that? I is going to be the teacher. <laughs> well, Andy, I don't know what you're going to do, but I show all for it. Well, hello, Amos. Hello. Well, how's you there, Amos? Hi, fellas. Well, here's the contracts all typed up. Yeah, well, we all set to close the deal here. Now, uh, how about it, Andy? Well, uh, tell you, boys, I've been thinking it over. That wizard stuff in the contract there, that didn't amount to much, did it? Oh, no, no, it didn't amount to nothing. You ain't heard nothing whiz there, Andy. Yeah, and you guys wouldn't take revenge of me, would you? Oh, absolutely not, brother Andy, no. Oh, no, we're your friends. Everything is in your favor. Yeah, and you need a couple of managers bad, too. Yeah, I guess you're right, Kingfish. Well, give me the money, I'll sign the contract. Oh, great, put it there, and shake hands. Great, yeah, now here yeah. is the $25 in cash. Yeah. Well, look at that green stuff there. Yeah, now, just sign it right there, Andy, right there where the dotted line is. Just put your name right yeah, on there. Yeah, okay, okay. Wonderful. Look at that. Andy, congratulations. This is the smartest thing you have ever done. Kingfish, you ain't kidding. <laughs> Arinso whitewash. With ease. Arinso brightwash. With safety. Is it any wonder that women here, there, everywhere are singing? Rinso white for a wash that's white as it can be. Rinso white. B R I G H T. Yes, Rinso keeps your colors bright. Get out more dirt for a wash so white is great advice you can't go wrong. Rinso white. Rinso white. Happy little wash day song. Plenty of reason to be happy on wash day with Rinso's soapy rich suds on the job. No hard scrubbing or boiling, just a short soaking with Rinso. A few quick finger rubs on extra soiled places, and clothes are ready to rinse. And I don't sneeze my head off either since I changed to Rinso. Right, ma'am. Rinso's anti-sneeze. It's made by an exclusive anti-sneeze process and is 98% free of sneezy soap dust. No other granulated soap can make this claim. So next wash day, remember, a Rinso white wash... With ease. A Rinso bright wash... With safety. Well, come on, Henry. Let's drop into Andy's office here. Well, it doesn't look like he's in. Yeah, well, we wait for him. Uh, maybe he's out trying to sell some suits. Sit down. Uh, by the way, Kingfish, just what is we supposed to do as Andy's managers? Oh, nothing. Just collect 50% of his salary, that's all. Oh, we got a sucker here, Henry. Yes, I wonder if our friend Andy has took any orders yet. Yeah, well, uh, that I don't know. Uh, well, wait a minute. Let me peek in his desk drawer here. That's where I would keep him. Yes, uh, take a good look in there. Uh, wait a minute. What is this? Henry. What is it, Kingfish. Listen to this. It's a telegram to Andy. Say here, we sent you an offer of a position by mistake. Due to an error, we wrote you instead of Andrew B. Brown. Please disregard our letter. 
Hope this hasn't inconvenienced you, signed Prentice Clothing Company. Henry, Andy ain't got no job at all. Good gracious, our money. The $25, we has been slugged. Hey, wait a minute now, Henry. Look here, I, I just thought of something. He must open a lot of Andy's mail when he ain't here. Maybe Andy ain't seen this telegram. Maybe he must put it in the drawer. Yes, yes, that's a possibility, all right. Uh, what must we do? Well, now, look here. Before we tackle Andy, I think that we ought to try to sell our interest in Andy to somebody so we can get our $25 back. Yes, uh, but who? Well, we has got to search for somebody that's a sucker, some guy that ain't very wise. We has got to search for... Hiya, fellas. The search is over. <laughs> Uh, say, Shorty, glad you drop in here now. Tell me this, uh, how would you like to manage Andrew Brown and get a percent of his salary? Now, that's the best way in the world of getting yourself a lot of money for doing nothing. Oh, no, that, that ain't no good, King Fairs. I, I, I don't want nobody breaking their back for me. <laughs> yeah, I, I can see that you don't know nothing about economics. Uh, who don't know nothing about e- 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 what you said? <laughs> well, who don't? But the, the idea, when you, when you get a man working for he he starts fluctuating with the Social Security. Yeah, well, well, what Social Security got to do with it? Well, what's it got to do with my Social Security? Yeah, well, well, what has it got to do with it? Well, if a man works for you and he, he brings in some money, you, you, start, you, you start getting social. And, and as, soon as, you, 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 as soon as you get some money, your, your relatives come and stay with you. And, and they, 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 they think they got so, uh, security. That, you get, uh, that, that's Social Security. That's what it is. Shorty. I know, I know, but if we, if we do what you say, how are you going to handle the supply and demand? And you, and you know what that does, don't you? Yeah, what do we do? Well, you get... Uh, that ain't a fair question. <laughs> yeah, well, well, answer it. Go, go on, answer it. Well, according to the figures released by the Federal Construction Committee, which is the subcommittee of, of the Federal Bureau of Internal Combustion and, and, the, and, and, and the subsidiary of, of the... Which, uh, that answers your question right there, you see. to do with economics. What's it got to do with it? I, I, I just told you. The, 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 the thing is, what I mean, you, you see, but when, hmm? <laughs> Look, Shorty, if Andy works and you get half his salary, that is economics. Mm. Now, even the government down in Washington is back of it. Oh, don't tell me about Washington. I, I know the government. I, I know the man that runs the government. Uh, now, you, you, you take that fellow in the cabinet right down there. Uh, what's his name? The man with the white hair. Uh, the man with the white, the white hair. Uh, uh, McNutt? Oh, I wouldn't say that about him. <laughs> Well, Shorty, who are you talking about? Well, I'm talking about the man, the, the head of the state. Uh, he just resigned, uh, Mr. Shell, Mr. Shell, uh, Mr. Shell. Uh, uh, Hull, Mr. Hull. Yeah, well, him too now. Now, yeah. you, now that man, that, <laughs> that man that took his place with the gray hair, Mr. Statistic, uh, Statistic, uh, Constance, uh, what, 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 what did he do? Well? He didn't do not that, that at all. He didn't. <laughs> Can't get away with it, that's why. Now, just a minute, boys. It seems to me that we is getting off the track here just a little bit. Now, now, listen, Shorty, take my advice. If you want to make some big money and let Andy go to work for you, you got it. No, no, like I've been arguing, I, I just couldn't do that. I, I couldn't have a man working for... Well, it, it, it's, it's against my principle. Uh, I, I guess I just wouldn't feel that. Like, I'd feel so guilty. I'd, well, I'd never, I'd never want to... When can he start? <laughs> Now, look here, that's the spirit, Shorty. Uh, Andy Brown can start earning money for you as soon as you pay us $25. $25? It's a wonderful proposition, Shorty. You'll never regret it. Just give us the $25 and we'll consider the deal closed. Oh, sure. I, I, I can give you the cash right now. I, 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 got, my, I got my checkbook right. Uh, I, I think there's enough money in the cash register. And we, we, we can go over to the bank. Uh, I ain't got a dime. <laughs> Kingfish, I think it's hopeless. After we done flop with Shorty, I tried selling our contracts to a couple of other people, but with no success. Yeah, well, we got to get our money back, because that was my wife's money, and I got to get it. Yes, I thought we had the best deal of our lives, and it turned out to be a mess. How could Andy be such a chiseler? Yeah. Here comes Andy across the street now. Look here, I'm going to show you how I'm going to handle the thing. It can't miss. Nobody ain't ever put nothing over on me yet, you know. Yes, well, do your very best, Kingfish. Uh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Well, old pal Andy. Hi, fellas. Hi. Yeah. Hello, Andy. Yeah, got some bad news for you, Andy. Yes, what's that? Yeah, here it is right yes, here. I'll read yes, it to yes, you. Yes. A law. Andy, they just passed a new law. Hmm. And it just happens to apply to the deal that me and Henry is in with you at the moment. Yes, read it to him, King Phil. Yeah, uh, let me read you this law. A law number 1796. Say here, 
This law applies to all citizens of the United States of America. This law has been passed and approved by the Army, the Navy, the President, the Senate, and good housekeepers. <laughs> well, I guess that takes in about everybody. Yeah, well, what's it say? Well, now, I got, that's what I go read you. Now, just keep your ears open and listen here. Now, here, here's the most important part of the whole law. Lord. Yeah, read it to me. Go ahead. Uh, say here, any man who sells part interest in his salary to anybody is liable to a $5,000 fine, 10 years in prison, or both. Or most likely more. You see, a very rigid law. Yeah, well, now, Ender, I think that gives you the whole picture. Yeah, I got the picture good. You two chiselers has been sticking your nose in my drawer and you found out about that telegram. You has been chiseling all your lives. And I took your $25 because I wanted to show you that two can work at the same game. Yeah, but Brother Andrew. Yes, Andy, why... Well, wait a minute, yeah, yeah, Andy, we only wanted to help you... Oh, why don't you stop crawling? By trying to chisel me, you done chisel yourself, you see there? Can't you take your lesson like a man? Oh, now, Brother Andrew, wait just a minute, will you please, (laughs) Andrew? Now, look, Andrew, as your old pal, the Kingfish, don't forget now, we have been brothers in that great fraternity to mess it nice of the sea for years, Andrew. Sure, yeah. I didn't mean it, Andrew. Honest, I didn't. Mm. Andrew, I got to have that money back. It belonged to my dear, sweet, gentle wife. <laughs> and if I don't get it back, she'll murder me, Andrew. All right, all right, crybaby. Get up, get up. Here's your $25 back. And you can tear up the contract. Oh, that's it, Andrew. But just don't ever forget about this in case you ever get any more ideas to pull a fast one. Yeah, all right, and I'll tear up the contract right now. Here it is. Brother Andy, I can't thank you enough. Yeah, and believe me, Andy, this done really learned me a lesson. I really deserve it. I'll never try to chisel nobody again. Me neither, Andy. And never again will ever I try to cut in on anything of yours as long as I live. Yeah, well, uh, come oh, in. Oh, yeah, come in, Amos, come in. Hi, yeah. fellas. Uh, Andy, here's another telegram that came for you at your office, and when you wasn't here, I've been out looking for you. Oh, thank you, Amos. Uh, what is it, you know? Yeah, well, read it, read it. Uh. Yeah, well, it's addressed to me, all right, from the Prentice Clothing Company. It's a... We informed you by telegram that our letter offering you position was a mistake. We have since received such a strong letter of recommendation from Amos Jones that we have decided to give you the job as our Harlem representative. Well, then I just happen to have another contract. Get away from me. Amos and Andy will be back in just a moment. For an easier wash day, get Rinso. Rinso's soapy rich suds get out stubborn dirt fast. Get white clothes, Rinso white. Washable colors, Rinso bright. And ladies, a Rinso white, Rinso bright wash is something to be proud of. You'll find Rinso a big help with the dishwashing too, and with all the soap and water jobs around the house. And now, here are Amos and Andy. Well, Andy, I don't understand it. You got that job with the Prentice Clothing Company on Tuesday, and here it is Friday, and it's all over already. Well, you know, Amos, like I say before, every job I has had, they give me at least a week to prove that I'm no good. Yeah. This time I outdone myself. Only took me three days. <laughs> Be sure to be with us next Friday evening at this same time when the makers of Renzo will again present the Amos and Andy show. Next week, the Kingfish and Andy test their artistic abilities by designing an Easter hat for the Kingfish's wife. So don't miss the fun. This program is broadcast to our armed forces all over the world. This is Harlow Wilcox saying good night to all of you from all of us. Say, uh, you're being mighty careful about those red ration points, aren't you, ladies? Well, don't forget that you can get extra red points by turning in your used kitchen fats and greases to your butcher. He gives you two red points plus four cents for every pound. Save all waste fats. And when you have a full can, take it to your butcher right away for extra red points. This is the next.
National Broadcasting Company.